Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It's Friday, October 1st, 2021, and we have a lot to talk about here as we flip the calendar over. It's now October. If we can get through this month without any major problems, we'll pretty much have it made. Yes, November is still part of hurricane season, but the month of October, we sort of get the secondary peak that happens in these last several years, really since 2015, uh, with the exception of 2017 and 2019. 17 was pretty impactful there, though, with uh, Nate. 2019, we had Nestor in uh, in October. But some of those other years, last year, 2018, uh, 2016 with Matthew, we've had some pretty big seasons. 2015 gave us Joaquin, even though it didn't directly impact the United States. That was a significant big-time hurricane out there. Uh, 2014, too, you can even go back seven years and look at Gonzalo, so, yes, October, we do need to pay attention. There's some little, um, like, rhyming thing out there, whatever you call it, where it says, you know, September, remember, and October, it's all over. No, it's not. We're not even close to being over in the month of October. All right? So there you go. That's the most lyrical whatever, uh, poet whatever that you're going to get from me. Here's Sam. Uh, no Sam I am jokes at all. It's a pretty serious a formidable storm, hurricane, category four, still almost a five, really, only six miles per hour shy of Cat 5. It's still sitting at 150 miles per hour this afternoon. There is Victor, not bad, too, down there at 65 miles per hour. One of the things I want to show you about Sam, I thought this was interesting, the key messages, the number one element of the key messages is the swells. Are the swells, is the swells, whatever. Um, and then secondary is the tropical storm conditions, or are the conditions. You get the idea. I've tried to be grammatically correct here, but I find it interesting that the swells gets the top billing, and then the tropical storm conditions is number two, mainly because I think the swells are going to be more impactful. It's not you know, to say that Bermuda is not important, but this is not as big of a problem, I think, as these swells are going to be affecting millions of people all along the Atlantic coast here um, of any beaches that face the ocean. So if you're a south-facing beach, and I say face the ocean, you got to face where those swells are coming from. So if they're coming in right at you, like you're an east-facing beach along North America generally, or a north-facing beach down in the Caribbean, those swells are going to be coming right at you. But if you're a south-facing beach, the swells come and then they kind of bend around you. It's all about the, the orientation but we got to take this seriously. Those swells can generate rip currents and some big-time breaking waves, maybe some overwash in some of the more vulnerable areas that that typically occurs. And there's not many lifeguards out there anymore full-time now that summer is over. So be real careful if you're heading out to the beach anywhere uh, along the, the shores of the Western Atlantic Basin beach areas, right? Just be careful out there this weekend got to keep you healthy, got to keep you alive so that I have somebody to talk to in these updates, right? So here's the stats on Sam. Again, 150, 937 pressure. That is from the 2 p.m. advisory, the intermediate advisory. But here's what's interesting here in the uh, discussion and the outlook section. Um, this part right here about the hurricane force winds and the tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds go out 60 miles from the center. So those won't be reaching Bermuda. And then the tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 205 miles from the center of Sam. And it looks like Sam will pass the core of Sam over 200 miles from Bermuda. So it is possible that that western periphery could bring some tropical storm conditions, rough seas, squally weather, a few rain bands, that kind of thing, to Bermuda during the day tomorrow and then it passes on by well to the east in terms of the core. Uh, so that's why the tropical storm warning is in effect for Bermuda. Pretty large circulation with Sam overall, well-defined eye still. It's caught up now on the southerly flow coming around this giant area of high pressure, and then this big trough is carved in, fairly big trough, to its west, and then that's the alleyway right through here that Sam is taking. There is Victor out here. You know, not bad, 65 miles per hour for an October 1st main development region storm. And that's helping to really boost the ACE count for this year. Uh, we'll look at that more in just a minute. A few things about SAM, though. Look at this. Day 7, 
It's gone six to seven days now, and we're in day seven, approaching day seven here. This tweet from Brian McNoldy. And what an amazing satellite presentation that Sam has today. And further on that particular topic, as of today, Sam, of course, is only one out of 20 named storms, but it is accounting for 31% and growing of the season's accumulated cyclone energy. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, and then for the season, we're at 153% of the average. You know, we've been above average since before day one. The season got started early, and we're way up here. I mean, we are definitely going to eclipse the long-term average by a lot, especially if we get any additional major hurricanes this month or even in November. You know, as an example, we had major hurricane Michelle in 2001, and there are other examples. 1985 was a major hurricane Kate. It actually made landfall as a weakening hurricane along the Florida Panhandle. So it is possible, and I think it's actually likely, in my opinion, that we will have one or two more major hurricanes before all is said and done here over the next 60 days, the time remaining on the clock of the Atlantic hurricane season. Another real quick tweet here from Sam or related to Sam. It's uh, from Phil Klotzbach here, Dr. Klotzbach mentioning again, now uh, with 150 mile per hour wind still, it has been a major hurricane for six and a half consecutive days, now knocking on the door of seven days, the longest time span in five years now since Matthew, way back in 2016. Matthew has already been five years. Wow, I remember that. That was one heck of a hurricane. Story for another day. But yes, uh, Sam breaking all kinds of records here. Now, luckily, is as I mentioned earlier, it will pass, as I say, comfortably. I think that's a an appropriate word. Uh, east of Bermuda here, the core uh, 230 miles from the absolute center line, if you will. Um, and then tropical storm force winds extend out 200 miles from the center, as I showed you. So it wouldn't take much to bring tropical storm conditions here on that western side to our friends in Bermuda. Howard, you're ready for it, aren't you? And uh, we can turn on Howard's cam. Rook, let's see if we've put it back on. I can't remember if we added it back in or not. Nope, it was my fault. I needed to, to do that. Uh, but Howard does have a cam there that I'm going to have for tomorrow. So when I do my update tomorrow, we'll take a look at Howard's cam. We were trying to get it onto my Nest account, and we've just had some issues. But we'll show you tomorrow. Today it's just kind of a nice day over there. Um, but Sam should pass far enough to the east. You might get a little rain, a little squally weather, but that's just about it. And, of course, the big-time waves and the crashing surf. Real quick, just to finish this section up, there is... Uh, Victor down here in the deep tropics. We'll hold on as a tropical storm over the next couple of days. You know, it could sneak in and become a hurricane briefly. That wouldn't surprise me. The water temperatures down here are certainly viable for that to happen. It's the rest of the environment. The mid-levels of the atmosphere kind of dry with some Saharan air spilling out here off of Africa. A little bit of strong wind shear. But all you need is 6 to 12 hours, maybe not even that where things really become favorable just long enough for it to organize an inner core and Victor could briefly become a hurricane. That wouldn't shock me if that happens. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some history here. They've updated this graphic. Now goes It now goes through 2020, so that's cool. And what does it show? Well, this is the old climatology chart, and this is all tropical storms and hurricanes here. The red area, we've already passed the traditional peak, but as we get into mid-October or so, there is a noticeable secondary peak right there, and then we get you know another one towards the end of October, and then a pretty sizable uh, resurgence again in November, just before things end. And these are little blips here that show up in climatology. There's a reason why these are there, just different ways that the season progresses, that you do have the primary peak in September, the secondary, the tertiary, is that what it is with the third one and then the quaternary? Maybe I'm just making words up. But we still have, my made up words notwithstanding, um, more hurricane season to go here. We're not done yet. And even if the United States is fine and dandy, that still doesn't spare our good friends of the Caribbean. I mean, we saw that last year. You know this. 
with Ada and Iota. And then you have like Wrong Way Lenny. 1999 is an example. As I said earlier, Michelle, Cuba, the Bahamas. That was a big problem in 2001. So we have a long ways to go. This is typically what the points of origin and the different tracks, at least through 2015. As I mentioned, Howard earlier, he's been working on his own version of this that does go up through modern times. And uh, I might get that to where I can show it to you. I'll talk with Howard about that to figure out. Um, he's not just a guy that lives in Bermuda, but he knows how to do some coding, too. So um, I keep complaining that somebody needs to update this. Howard's been working on it as a private citizen uh, of Bermuda, no less. But anyway, I digress. Uh, this chart kind of shows you still pretty scattered all around the basin, more or less. But the concentration is, you know, in the western part. There's more density over here in the western Caribbean and vicinity. Uh, the East Pacific does have its own grouping, but I tell you, did you notice that September we only had one development? That was Olaf in the Eastern Pacific, and that's it. It's been flatlined in the East Pack, and I'll show you why at least a part of the reason why you know what it is. Come on, it starts with an L and ends with an A. We'll get there. But the uh, East Pack has been pretty slow, uh, as has generally the Western Pacific. A couple of typhoons out there, but certainly not gangbusters busy. The next third of October, by the way, this was the first third, the first to the tenth. The second third, the next ten days, pretty good concentration again down here. A lot of subtropical development, that's for sure and then it wanes even more in the eastern Pacific. And finally, by the last part of October, um, again, the I guess the highest concentration, if you want to call it that, uh, western part of the basin, southwest Atlantic, not much out here, some subtropical and even deep tropical development. But the season starts to wind down overall, but our focus will really be this area through here with the highest concentration of concern, if you want to call it that, right through here. Yes, some have come through. Hazel did that weird thing where it crossed up and went up into Canada. That's roughly what the track did. Matthew was something similar, but Matthew was already going by this time in 2016. We don't have anything out there now. I guess Sam's the closest to that, but Sam's turning, as we already talked about. But we have a ways to go, that is for sure, and this is a big reason why I do have concerns going forward. You know, nothing is a guarantee. I want to make this clear. We can look at charts and graphs and prognostications and what this guy says and what that guy says and all the experts in the world, and it doesn't mean that anything has to happen. There is a difference, and that's why this is all probabilistic based. One sports analogy for you. You can get the guy on the free throw line or the woman, the man or the woman, whatever, and they're a 95% free throw shooter, 92%, and all they got to do is make those two buckets and they win the game. They could miss both. You know, and everybody goes, ah, you know, they should have made it. What happened? It's probability. You know, until it's actually happening and has happened, it's not 100%. So, big caveat there. That being said, this is about as obvious a sign of what could happen as one could look for. You want to look and see what are the stages, uh, you know, how would the stage be set to give us a very busy October. This is it. An, an anomalously warm Caribbean. Everywhere except this teeny little strip just south of Louisiana is above average, and a lot of it considerably so. The rest of the Atlantic also above average, but where we're mostly concerned, above average. The La Nina definitely coming on. Maybe later this month it officially gets declared by NOAA, and the Climate Prediction Center. The other part of this, Gulf of Mexico, as this is an anomaly map, departures from the average, these are actual sea surface temperatures. Now right up here along the extreme northern Gulf Coast around Louisiana and Mississippi, you know, yes, you can get a fast moving system that comes up here and brings major impacts, no doubt. But these water temperatures are cooling, they are shallower, and gradually cooling off. And if we zoom in here, I can show you this. Um, the 26 Celsius line is right here, and it goes all through here into the Mississippi Sound, including parts of Lake Pontchartrain. And so the odds of a strong hurricane maintaining its strength, and I'm just showing you possibilities, not trying to scare you, is, is low. 
in, in my opinion. But you know, got to be real careful because Delta last year, Zeta, they brought some big impacts despite the fact that even at that time of year, the 26 Celsius line was already pulled south of where this is, if you remember correctly. And anyway, you get the idea. It is looking a little better. I'm trying to give you some sense that hopefully our good friends in Cajun country are done with hurricanes for now and for the next 10 years at least. Um, love the people over there, but it's time to leave Louisiana alone, can we? The rest of the Gulf, very warm, 29, 30 Celsius, no doubt about it, extreme uh, warmth, high ocean heat content values, whatever. The fuel is absolutely there. Along the East Coast, in the Mid-Atlantic and vicinity, 26 Celsius line has pulled just offshore, my neck of the woods, so water temperatures out here, about 78 Fahrenheit. Even down to Myrtle Beach and vicinity, Garden City area, you got to go all the way down to near Charleston and south to get back into the 80 degree water or 26 and a half Celsius, whatever. Um, but the Gulf Stream and just offshore, still plenty warm, 80, 81, 82, and out near Bermuda out here where Sam is, also water temperatures nice and warm in the uh, low 80s. So there's plenty of energy out there for hurricanes to take advantage of as we go forward. So there's the vorticity of Sam, kind of covered up by the symbol. Same thing for Victor. What we're looking for, do we see anything starting to fester in this area through here? And as you can see, the answer is no. This is going to be our new best friend right here. This will tell us when do we start to see these little blobs, these amorphous blobs show up that start to consolidate and become round. That's going to be the tool to use here, this vorticity chart, and we will refer to it often once the models start indicating something trying to develop. This will really help to show what may happen down the road. We'll start to look for it. This is the real time. This is not a simulation of the future. This will tell us when we have to really start watching, and so far, nothing down there to be concerned with just yet. A couple things here I was noticing over at Storm 2K through the uh, indicators thread, sea surface temperatures, Saharan air layer, sea level pressure, shear, steering instability, you know, all the stuff that us weather geeks watch, the indicators. And I was scrolling through, reading what everybody was saying, and something caught my attention down here. This was really interesting. Now, hold on to your, what did the, is Samuel L. Jackson in Jurassic Park when he's got that cigarette, he goes, hold on to your butts. What I'm about to show you is crazy, I know. Did you know that the CFS has a long range forecast that goes out hundreds of hours, like 600 hours plus into the future? And you know, you say, well, it's not very reliable. I, I get that. But what it's doing is it's kind of like a, uh, a way to look at the possibilities. And if something keeps showing up over and over, then you see, does it start to move into the more traditional guidance of operational forecast models, the GFS, the Euro, that go out 10 days for the Euro, 16 days for the GFS, etc. So it's a useful kind of fuzzy look into the future as to what may be coming as climate signals start to unfold. You understand? So when I show you this, don't think of it as, you got to be kidding me. You're starting to look at way out in the long range, but that's what this thread is for over at Storm 2K. We watch this kind of stuff, and when it's not there, not there, not there, and then it starts to show up. It's very much like chatter when we talk about looking for like terrorist activity. I'm not kidding. You, The, the CIA, the NSA, they look at message boards. They read all kinds of stuff out on the dark web, and they pick up noise, and through that noise, what chatter is there that they can pick up on? They've been doing this all the way back you know, to World War I, for goodness sakes, probably before that. And the same thing holds true in numerical weather prediction. There's a lot of noise with the atmosphere and the modeling, and then you want to see, does something start to show up that's consistent, just like the enemy, if you will, talking about an attack coming up, whatever it was, whatever the case may be, same thing in numerical weather prediction, but different, obviously. And this is a really interesting tool right in here that's being talked about. 600 plus hours out, this is the whole globe. And if you look right there, the CFS starting to indicate way, way out in time, something trying to develop in the vicinity of, wait for it, 
where we're supposed to be looking. So that's what's important here. We know that the Northwest Caribbean, the Western Caribbean, Southern Gulf, is the climatologically favored area. Now that the long range guidance is starting to hone in on it, we pay attention more going forward. This is a zoomed in version of it that Hammy posted here. Hammy's one of the uh, members at Storm 2K. Again, way on out. And what's interesting to me, Hammy was mentioning often that the uh, CFS was not showing anything. And then all of a sudden it is, and it's like, yep, there you go. So now we look for consistency. Does this message, or I'm sorry, not message, but signal, consistently show up in the model guidance? So you don't look at this and go, oh my gosh, way out here at 664 hours or 84 hours, uh, there's going to be a hurricane in the um, Yucatan Channel. It's the overall signal and the noise in there. You're filtering through that noise to see what's showing up in the long range guidance and then people talk about it from there going forward and it makes sense too when you put it together from a tweet like this or with a tweet La Nina like atmospheric pattern looks like it'll develop in the coming weeks this is from Ben Knoll by late October sinking air is expected to focus over the central Pacific in response to cooler than average ocean temperatures and the Atlantic hurricane season looks likely to rumble on that ties in really well with what's going on that I just showed you at Storm 2K. So here we are right now. This is roughly um, today. All right. So the next several days going out till about the 8th of October. Move it forward a frame. Now we get uh, from the 8th to the 15th. All that green. Let me highlight it just in case. Where are we looking? Right through here. That starts to become favorable. This is way on out. Farther out in time than that, or further out in time. Green, green, sinking over the Pacific, as Ben talks about. Then you go back and you go, okay, well then this stuff up here starts to make more sense. You understand? You start to tie these things together, and that gives you something to look forward to in terms of looking in the guidance later on. These are the clues, and it's amazing that the science gives that to us this far in advance in this day and age. All right? All right. All right, so uh, that's it. I'm done. So don't forget, on Twitter there, on Facebook and YouTube, and if you're new to the YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share, tell people what we're doing here. It's great to have you. It's awesome. These are the social media areas that we uh, take advantage of the most. Tried the Instagram. Not going to do TikTok. I know there's all kinds of advantages, but man, this is enough. These three big ones, in my opinion. So it's great to have you following along, some of you, on all three platforms. And, of course, we are supported through the fantastic crowdfunding partners from all over the world via Patreon. If you want to know more about that, it's easy to do. Just aim your smartphone camera at that QR code, and you can read about the project over at Patreon, an app and a website that lets you crowdfund projects like what we're doing. So thank you for that. Um, that is it. We covered a lot today. But you know what? It's October 1st. I wanted to set the stage for what's probably coming ahead and things to look out for in the future. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll go from here and wait and see how things play out. Have yourselves a great weekend. And uh, tomorrow when I do the discussion, we'll have Howard's camera back up and running there in Bermuda on the interactive map. And we'll show you what things look like in his neck of the woods. All right. All right. Have a great rest of your Friday. I am Mark Stout of HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again some more over the weekend.